The championship is back and it didn't disappoint, did it? Hot takes for you for a Sunday. Get yours in the comments. Help set the agenda for the championship check-in podcast tomorrow. Let's start with some opening day chaos. And I'm going to Elland Road and I'm going to the Den for that. Six goals and five goals for the fans at those two stadiums. And how on-brand Leeds United utter chaos was. Leeds 3, Portsmouth 3. I kind of had it in my head that to right the wrongs of last season where Leeds just missed out and were in the wrong place at the wrong time, quite frankly, that they need to get themselves a good start and just zoom off into the distance. They probably didn't have this on the agenda for the first game against promoted League One side Portsmouth, where Leeds led 1-0 and then found themselves 2-1 down, then got the equaliser straight after half-time. Go on, go forth, win the game. No, Portsmouth then take the lead in stoppage time at the end of the game and then Leeds not only equalise to make it 3-3, but miss an absolute sitter to win the game. Look, I know Leeds fans probably won't take this as a crumb of comfort, but from what I understand and looking at the stats, Leeds did enough to win about five games there. And it was just one of those. And I hear you Leeds fans saying, yeah, we say that a lot. It was just one of those. Does feel like a bit of a freak when you look at the numbers. And I think say this advisedly, you play that game 10 times and Leeds probably win it nine times. This was the one occasion, though, that Portsmouth got themselves a point. So welcome back and welcome to the madhouse in the best possible way for Pompey. Part of a brilliant 3-3 draw, probably for them and for the neutral, not for the Leeds fans. Popcorn eating box office stuff as ever at Ellen Road as Leeds start with a draw. And... Equally dramatic down at the Den, where Millwall went 2-0 down to Watford. By the way, Malfortin matchup this one was on the Championship Checking Podcast. And didn't it deliver? Duncan Watmore with a double to get Millwall back on terms at 2-2. And then Rayovic goes and wins the game when you think it's swinging in Millwall's direction there. Is he onside? Is he offside? You can tell me down there in the comments. But... A lot of doom and gloom around Watford going into this. A lot of very negative predictions. They have started with a big win down at the Den. If you were there at either of those games, fair play to you. You saw the drama. Get your views in the comments. Cheat codes. We often talk about championship cheat codes. I want to talk about Gustavo Hamer. And I want to talk about Jack Clark, who both scored decisive second goals in 2-0 away wins for their team. Let's talk about Jack Clark first of Sunderland. Cardiff nil, Sunderland two. And Reggie Labrie is in at Sunderland. And I think it's going to take a couple of years to get that motor in, in the right direction. But he's off to a winning start. A little too often, I think, last season, Sunderland's tactics were give the ball to Jack Clark, let him win you the game. But hey, every team needs a star player. Well, Clark came up with the goods here, but Sunderland had already got the lead in the first 20 minutes before Clark settled it towards the end there. Will Clark still be with Sunderland in September? You tell me in the comments there. They have been okay with selling and replenishing up at the Stadium of Light, but let's be fair, Sunderland and most championship teams would be better with Jack Clark in than not in. And... Gustavo Hamer, I was at his kind of send-off game for Coventry last season. He played, I think he only played once, didn't he, um, over at Leicester. And for about 25 minutes against a newly relegated Premier League team, nobody could get near him. He is the sort of player that if you can get him on the pitch for the majority of your games, he can drag your team wherever he wants to. He was on the score sheet as Sheffield United won on opening day after relegation from the Premier League. They won 2-0 at Preston. Yes, OK, the goals were a bit fortuitous, weren't they? It was a deflection for the opener for our blaster. And Woodman, frankly, throws the ball straight to Hamer. But he has got the quality to score that goal. And he has got the quality to lead the charge for Sheffield United. Two championship cheat codes straight in. You've keyed in the code. And away you go, Gus Hamer and Jack Clark. His head's not right. How many times have we heard that? Players 
in this ridiculous situation we have where the transfer window kind of overlaps the start of the season and players are expected to start and play for their teams whilst interest is happening, deals are being done. And I want to give you two examples and the story of Sammy Smodix and the story of Johnny Rowe, who seem to have gone about things in rather different ways in opening round. Sammy Smodix, I expected him to be on the bench. I've got to admit, I didn't expect him to get on the pitch for Blackburn against Derby. And by God, he got on the pitch. The game was in the balance at 1-1. Smodic came on, in fact, just before Derby scored and then, rather masterfully, got himself an assist, got himself a goal and basically showed the confidence and the quality that took him to be championship scorer, top scorer, with 27 goals last season. He agreed that he was going to play and contribute to Blackburn. And boy, did he contribute. Blackburn 4, Derby 2. OK, we all think that Smodic is going to be off at some point in this window. But he was OK to risk himself and play that last half hour and really helped his team get the win. Now, that was the first watch along of the weekend. The second was Oxford versus Norwich, where I have to say the Norwich fans were less than appreciative of their star man, Johnny Rowe deciding his head was not right and he was not going to play for Norwich at Oxford. Now, I'm not going to necessarily um, cause and correlation say that that caused Norwich's defeat. That would be a bit of a disservice to Oxford, who played really, really well uh, to win 2 0 on their return to the Championship. But from perusing Twitter and the live chat in my watch along, Norwich fans are a little bit like, look, you're contracted to the club. It's your job here. No one's bought you yet. It might be your last game, second, third, last game, whatever. Do your job. Get on the pitch. And, as Smodic did, help your team win the game. Johnny Rowe did not do any of those things. And Oxford cruised in, frankly, on Johannes Hopp Torrup's debut as Norwich manager and won 2-0. I suspect Smodic and Rowe will both be out of their clubs before the window goes. But at the moment, one is certainly higher regarded than his fan base than the other. Get your thoughts in on the kind of respective strategies here from Smodix and Johnny Rowe, the maybe sought after, maybe about to leave star players for their teams. Great expectations. Now, uh, all the predictions have been happening. We can finally get down to the football, but Middlesbrough and Coventry have been regarded by many as the best of the rest outside the year one and two parachute teams in the championship this season. Both were in the playoffs two seasons ago and both kicked off their displays with one nils, although Borough won one nil, Coventry lost one nil. For Middlesbrough, it's just that beautiful start, isn't it? You get your first game at home, you tick it off with a win, with a clean sheet and, talking about great expectations, Emmanuel Latte Lath, who finished last season with 11 goals, in 12 games and is a big tip to be top scorer this season he got the goal as well so oh lovely really for Middlesbrough off they go and they're looking to gain early momentum and be a little bit more like they were two seasons ago where they were in the playoffs in fact lost the commentary uh, than last season where they missed out although they did rally at the end of the season they're trying to pick up where they left off Coventry did the opposite last season they kind of tailed off but plenty of mitigating factors with the cup run and ridiculous fixture congestion. Everybody's kind of looking at Coventry now. And we mentioned Gus Hamer, the championship cheat code. He left at the start of last season with Victor Jokerez. And Coventry have seemingly rebuilt very sensibly over three straight transfer windows. But they've got off to a bad start. They went off to Stoke. OK, maybe that's a more difficult game. You tell me the Middlesbrough's at home to Swansea. But Lewis Baker off the bench and he got the winner so in the battle of the best of the rest challenging those parachute teams it is Middlesbrough who have drawn first blood and got the win Coventry long 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 way to go but they've started with a defeat get your thoughts on those two in the comments and finally a scoring start we spoke about Lat a laugh everybody wants a scoring start and the guy who wrote the book on this two seasons ago is Oscar Estupinian for Hull, who I think he scored six goals in his first three games. He made a flying start and he's made a good start again today scoring for Hull. Is he going to be kind of back in the picture 
Now Tim Volta is in. He was surplus to requirements and loaned out and playing elsewhere for two different clubs um, in recent times for Hull. But he's back in and he's back on the score sheet. Although Mayulu for Bristol City looked like he was going to be the one showing this opinion the way to make a scoring start. Beautiful flip up, spin, volley goal looked like. He possibly got Bristol City the winner before Estupinian's late show. Are we seeing a couple of goal-scoring starts here? 10, 15, 15, 20, maybe. You tell me for those two players, Estupinian and Mayulu. 1-1 one, one in the end with that late equaliser for Hull. But that all pales into insignificance compared to our take about super scoring start from Josh Madger of West Brom. How about that? A hat-trick on opening day. Tell me, have you ever witnessed live and in the flesh an opening day hat-trick? Let me know in the comments if you have, but take a bow, Josh Madger. He's got to be our man of the day who powered in three goals for West Brom at QPR. So much confidence about QPR with Marty Sifuentes, but you're coming up against the guy who knows the championship oh so well in Carlos Corver on a super performing manager. He's done it again at West Brom. And Josh Madger, the hot hand on opening day with a hat trick. Is this going to be a guy who can score the goals when West Brom were a little bit lacking up top, weren't they, last season? Maybe, maybe that was the only place they fell down with that beautifully organised defensive shape of Mr. Carlos Corberon. There you go. Some hot takes for your Sunday. Remember, we still have Sheffield Wednesday and Plymouth to go. And then two year one parachute teams go head to head on opening day on Monday night. Burnley visiting Luton. We'll probably be able to cover Luton Burnley on the channel, but it is Enid's birthday on Sunday. Therefore, um, you won't be seeing me talking about Sheffield Wednesday. Plymouth until tomorrow. Uh, where we will be back with Sam Parkin for the Championship Check-In podcast. Get across that. Get your hot takes in the comments. Set the agenda for the show with Sam. And why not click up and over there and you'll see our round one predictions. How did we do? How did you do? The Championship is back. The carnage is ticking away. Drink it in, everybody.